We are so glad that you joined us today. God wants to do so much for you and through you, and we want to hear about it. So take a moment to share your story with us at mystory@lbtlima.org. If you would also like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do so at limabaptisttemple.org. Or you can download our church app available for iPhone and Android users. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy today's message. Some bad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I Some of you have asked, and I'll just go ahead and fill it in, fill you in, because I want to tell everybody, you know, how everybody will ask you something. But I want to thank so many of you who've been praying for my parents. Uh, I had a text message while I was in the staff meeting Tuesday that my dad was doing bad and was asking for me, so I caught a plane Tuesday, got back last night. Uh, we'll find out Wednesday if he's in uh, renal failure, kidneys like 13%. And so pneumonia and MRSA, and I think he's got the other two pretty well whipped. But anyway, and then I got a mom, you know, that has Alzheimer's. And so, but it's, uh, but you know, God's good. My dad's 91 years old. My mom's 87. But I just thought I wanted to tell y'all, I mean, prayer goes a long way. You know that. And I, I appreciate it so much. And so it would just be easier for me to just let everybody know that at one time. And there's not enough uh, uh, thanks that I can give all of you to let you know just how much that means to me and my wife. Also, as you saw on the screen, uh, of course, we have the David Phelps uh, concert, but also we have our Beyond Borders, our missions conference. On that 8th, uh, October 8th, on that Sunday morning, Dr. Mark Milioni, who's the president of the Baptist Bible College in Springdale, uh, Arizona, I'm mean, Arizona, Spring, Springdale, uh, Missouri will be here. He will preach that morning. And then we have our missions dinner that night, okay? And he will be talking that night actually about the college, and he'll be doing that there in the gym. And then on October 15th, we have uh, a guy named Steve Bender. He is the associate to uh, uh, John Connerup. And he will be here, and he will preach. And that Saturday night, the uh, evening, the 14th, there will be a ladies' uh, kind of brunch get-together. And uh, his wife, Janelle, sings, and she will also speak. You'll be hearing a lot about that. And we also will have two additional missionaries on the 8th and two additional missionaries on the 15th. So we look forward uh, to that. If you're a guest today, we want to welcome you. If you look at the pew there in front of you, you will see a connection card. If you would take time to fill that out, and we'd love to have a record of your visit. And any questions you may have, just write that on there, and I'll be sure to, to look at these. I do all the time, and we'll pray for you if you have any prayer requests. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is 
is mighty and so much stronger. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in all and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. Son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my done for everyone in this room is more than we can ever begin to fathom or imagine. God, for me, sometimes it's easy to forget what it felt like to be bound because I've been free for so long. God, would you renew that in every single one of us? Help us to remember, God, what you saved us from, how much you love us. I pray that we would just soak in your presence, Lord, and that we would just want to know you you provide so much for us, God. And yet, Lord, sometimes we get um, lost in that and asking for this or asking for that. Lord, right now we just come to you and we just want to know you. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made on the cross for me and for everybody here. And God, if there is one person in this room that has not accepted that free gift, Lord, I pray they would not leave this place today without doing that, God, and that they would know what it feels like to truly be free. Lord, we love you, and we just sing to you now. We praise your name. Amen. Amen. There's nothing worth more than will ever come close. Nothing can compare your identity. Tasted and 
Well, amen. I want to thank uh, Lance and Toby this morning for leading in worship. Uh, Tyler, his uh, grandfather, Buck Sutton's dad, actually took the whole family. I think it was 35 or 40, I don't know how many, on a cruise. Yeah, isn't that amazing? And uh, so he will be gone. Uh, he's gone today, but he will not be here next Sunday either. And uh, we have someone else uh, le- actually leading next week. So, uh, but appreciate people who can uh, fill in. If you have your Bibles, would you open them to John chapter 14? John chapter 14. As I have contemplated about what to speak about uh, today, you know, all of this since Revive Ohio, uh, the Lord has just uh, been filling me up and filling me up and filling me up. And I have gone this way and I've gone that way, you know. Uh, It's just been unbelievable. Uh, So you, you try to get it all, you try to swallow it, and then you just try to, you know, regurgitate, I guess, sometimes, but actually get it out, too, for for the people. But the Lord has really been good this past uh, week. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, I'm still hearing story after story about Revival Ohio. Uh, Many of you uh, were involved in that, and I'll be sharing a lot about that as we go. And last week, uh, uh, well, during the Revival Ohio week, as you know, God did an incredible work. And, you know, last Sunday, we we didn't get out, I think, to 1 o'clock. Amen? Amen. We're going to get out early today. (laughs) Normally, people ask me, they say, Pastor, you know, like, how many words or how many pages or, you know, when you preach? A normal 30-minute sermon for me is anywhere between 2,500 to about 3,800 words, okay? And you know how I do that, because I can talk like that if you can keep up, or I can slow it down. But today, I've got about 700, okay? (laughs) Which means the Lord's got the other 28. (laughs) But just things that have been on my heart, and uh, we'll try to, only have two points today, don't have a poem or anything, But let's pray together before we get started. Father, you are welcomed in this place today. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, I thank you for what you have done, Lord, through so many people during Revival Ohio. And Father, I pray that we'll never, ever be the same. So Lord, guide us today, and we pray, Lord, that you may minister to all of us. In Jesus' blessed name, I ask it all. Amen. Amen. Well, like I said earlier, God did a great work through Revive Ohio. But I personally believe there is a greater work to be done. In fact, I have called a pastor's meeting, the same pastors that got together from all these churches, for those of you who may not have been involved, but over 50 churches. We had about 40 pastors that were here. And uh, we're going to have a meeting at 1 o'clock Monday. And we're going to keep plowing right ahead. I told you we had passed out some sheets. There's still some back there that we have the next six months of outreach uh, planned. And we want to continue sharing the gospel. You heard uh, Michael say that Shelby County, uh, what's that, 35, 40 minutes? I don't know my counties. Somebody, how far is that? Okay. And they're going to be having their revival house. It's going to be Shelby County. And we have so many of our people that are ready to go. We have people who are ready to lead, who's to go out and share the armband, the gospel, and the Bibles. And, um, and that will actually be the week of our missions conference. Now, I don't want you leaving here on Sunday night, okay, Sunday day. But honestly, Monday through that um, Friday and Saturday, we're going to have people going out, going to Shelby County uh, to help. And, and we need to do that. We need to, that's, that's what's so awesome about Revive Ohio. Everybody just gets involved and continues to help other people. John chapter 14, beginning with verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do. Why? Because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, This I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. You know, a lot of times we plan things. 
And I have been guilty of this. And then we ask God to bless it. Amen? Instead of us just praying about some things and getting those things from God in advance, amen? And then letting God bless those things. You know, I was thinking the kind of where I wanted to go today. I, I remember one of my first leadership meetings here. Um, well, I just kind of called a lot of everybody together. If you teach uh, any kind of Bible study class or any kind of small group or whatever, or if you're just interested in, I remember we had a luncheon and we went over into Fellowship Hall after church and I talked about certain things like in business, uh, you do this thing called a SWOT analysis. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. Okay, and so, it's the same thing we do in the church. Now, it's S-W-O-T. It's not like S-W-A-T, like you swat a fly, okay? And what we do is, just like in a church, just like in businesses, we look at our strengths. If you were to ask me, what are the strengths of Lima Baptist Temple, I think that we fellowship really well. I do. I think we are very, very friendly. I do. And I think that we are very, very welcoming. Welcoming. And I hear this from so many people. Uh, the Revival High staff especially. I think there are a lot of things that we, we can do better. So what are the strengths of, if you're in a Bible study group, what are your strengths? You know, but then you, you leave the strengths and then you go to the weaknesses. Okay, now I don't want everybody to raise their hand and start shouting them out, but... You know, what, what are the weaknesses, do you think, really, the weaknesses of our church? What are the weaknesses of, of your Bible study class, if you're in one, of your small groups? And I think that's something that we have to always have before us. And then we have to look at opportunities. What are some opportunities? Well, Revive Ohio was a huge opportunity that we capitalized on, Okay? But here's my thing. Were you involved in some way? We had people to raise their hand that hosted homes. Some that had volunteered to host homes that just didn't need all of them. That's what's really good. We had some of you who signed up to disciple people. They needed 126, and that's what they got was 126. Uh, we had people to go out and share the gospel for the first time. Some people who went out and shared the gospel just hadn't done it in a while. People to help set up, tear down, do different things. But you think about opportunities. Uh, you know, do, do you have an ongoing mission project? Have you been on a mission trip? Uh, how many people need what you're getting in church on Sundays? I mean, we need to see what God wants for us and, and seize it. And then we have the T for the threats. We're, what are the things that keep us from growing numerically right here in this church and spiritually? What are, what are the threats that keep you from growing spiritually? What things are keeping us from reaching our community, from reaching our city, from reaching all of Allen County? Well, threats can be such things as, this is a big one in the church, is called apathy, laziness, laziness, apathy. For example, there are people who are lazy about getting up and attending church on Sunday morning. There are people who make commitments to being involved in certain things, whether it's choir, whether it's orchestra, whether it's a Bible study group, or just like I said, church attendance. But we get lazy, and then we just put it on the back burner. I think a lot of things, at times, there's people who have the wrong spirit. And because they have the wrong spirit, they influence someone else by that spirit because that person decides to maybe listen to them. I think there's always maybe a lack of vision. And here in the last several weeks, and back when I went off in July, the Lord scared me to death with some of the things that he was showing me. And I do believe, I do not think that we were ready to go any further than maybe what God was telling me until Revival Ohio happened. And you're going to be hearing more about that here in a moment. And then I think there's a lack of resources. 
Uh, that's why for those of you, if you've been around now, you see these buildings start to change, don't you? And you want to be able to have rooms that inside a building that can accommodate people and more small groups. There's a lot of those things. And you know, just like when we did our mountain move in faith, and by the way, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, seven months, we still have, y'all know how many? 17 more months. So don't quit giving if you made a commitment to mountain moving faith. It's very, very important. It costs money to be able to do these things. I think there's a lack of compassion today. We're always threatened by that. We need to love people right where they are, warts and all. And I think there's a lack of passion. If God's called you to do something, you need to do your work as unto the Lord. I think there's a lot of self-centeredness that goes on. And I think there's a lot of pride. Those are threats that happen a lot of times. But I think there's three big things. I think there's some things in, in churches that we need to stop doing. Now, don't let your mind go too far here. But there are some things that we do, maybe because we've always done it that way, and we just think God's going to bless it. And I think now we're to the point that we've got to understand that everything we do needs to be done with a purpose. There's got to be done with a person purpose. There's things that we need to stop doing. There may be some programs, maybe some events. I don't know what they are yet. I haven't had a chance to really just sit down when God just started dealing uh, with me this past week. What are they? But see, we have to stop minoring on majors and stop majoring on minors, and we have to keep the main thing the main thing, just like sharing the gospel is the main thing. But there's a lot of things that we need to keep doing. Oh, I think we need to keep doing worship. I think we need to keep preaching. I think we need to keep teaching. I think we still need to have baptism. I think we need to have the Lord's Supper and on and on and on and on. But there's a lot of things that we probably need to start doing. In other words, there needs to be more outreach in sharing the gospel. Amen? There's got to be. There needs to be. See, we need to start trusting God more, and we need to let God be God. That's what we need to do. I think that when we realized, like, uh, you know, Kyle said that first night, Kyle Martin, that when we realize that we are anointed and have the power to, exa to do exactly what God's called us to, it will change this whole community. Now, let me ask you a question. What makes something stick? Why are we religious about doing some things and let other things slip? In other words, let me ask it this way. Is God in it? Is God in it? God has a greater work for us as a church and as individuals to do. God has, listen, why would God use our church corporately? And why would God use you individually? Well, let me just park here for time rev revive. Here's some things that have just been coming out. Praise the Lord, Revive Ohio, Allen County. Many have testified of an incredible week of ministry. Now, last week, if you were here, were you blessed? Just give me an amen. 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 You know, because people got changed. And that God just broke their heart. And God got into their heart. And God changed their heart. And we had scores of people who could have got up here and testified. And I'm still getting all kind of messages from people. But listen to this. From a uh, Time to Revive team member. We were welcomed with open arms, the Lima Baptist Temple. The hospitality was phenomenal. And once again, my family enlarged. Thank you doesn't even seem adequate. A remnant is rising up to awaken the people. All nations in Israel be on alert. The time is near. Here's time to revive team members. Pure grace, momentum, phenomenal. Allen County pastor, one of the Allen County pastor, haven't seen anything like this in Lima, Ohio since Billy Sunday in 1915. Here's another Allen County pastor. I've seen lots of groups come and go but have never seen a group with such unity. Another pastor, my life will never be the same. 
You know, we revived kids. We had 177 kids that had the gospel bracelet that went through it that know how to lead people to Jesus. A mom of a seven-year-old said, thank you for revived kids. Her son wants to pray for people, share on the streets, and walk through the gospel Bible. The kids have been empowered to share the gospel and walk out their faith. Then, of course, the discipleship praise that I said earlier. 126 disciples needed is, is what it ended up being instead of 115, and 126 were filled. You know why? Because you were willing to get out of the box that I talked about here two or three weeks ago. I think it was actually on September 10th that morning of Revival Ohio. And you were willing to get out on the edge. Because that's where we meet God, is always out of the box and over on the edge. Many of you, as I said, have talked about going to Shelby County next month. And I love it. You know what's funny? Is many of you went from fear to being fearless. Went from fear to being fearless. Some of you have gone from being disobedient to being obedient to what God has called you to do. You see, Jesus promises a greater work there in verse 12 for those who believe in him. You see, greater does not mean more power. Greater does not mean more knowledge. Greater means extent. Jesus' ministry was limited to three years in a specific geographic location within the Middle East. Today, the church has the mandate to go to all people in all nations. For example, we have our missions conference, and you understand that we take on other missionaries. They'll come, and they're raising support, and they're calling them, God's calling them to different countries. My, uh, one of my nieces, I was down this past, uh, as I was in Tuscaloosa visiting my parents uh, there, and my niece, 27 years old, she was born two hours earlier than my oldest daughter. God called her to go to India. She went there for two weeks and was in her training and seeing what was going on. She leaves in April. She goes there to live with a family there that their church is supporting. But the family lives and is from India. And she will be able to teach people how to share the gospel. But she will be killed if she's the one sharing the gospel. You understand? But I want to tell you something. We need to be sharing the gospel right here. The gospel is needed everywhere, and we need to understand that. Sometimes the biggest line to cross isn't a geopolitical boundary. Sometimes it's a property line. It may just be that God has a great work for us to do in our backyard. Now, let me ask you a question. This is real simple math, okay? So let's just say we have 600 people here right now. If every person in here reached one person this year, how many more? 600. Huh? If every person in here just reached one person. It's amazing, isn't it, how math works? What if everyone did that? Our church would double in size. Well, like I said, I only have two points, and here's the first one. A great work begins with believers on the move. If you have your Bibles open to Acts 1, I decided to add this passage. I'm going to read 14 verses here. Acts 1, beginning with verse 1, and we'll go through verse 14. In the first book of Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself dead? No. Alive. Understand, you've heard this pastor say again, we need to act like we serve a God who's alive. Amen? He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days, and that's important, 40 days, and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, 
Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father was fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of all the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room, whoo, been there, where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these, with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Jesus, birth, death, and resurrection get much attention, and rightly so. You heard me say, I think, the last week, I said, I don't even remember what I said last week, but in that pastor's meeting, as we all came together, and we talked about, we're not here for our denominational differences. You know, whether you are Arminian, and you are Calvinist, and you are this, and you are that, or Methodist, or Baptist, or whatever, can we not all agree on the death, the burial, and the resurrection? And we all agreed that we could agree to that. You see, we celebrate Jesus' birth at Christmas, and rightly so. We celebrate Jesus' death on Good Friday, and rightly so. And we celebrate his resurrection on Easter Sunday, and again, rightly so, it should be done. But the ascension is not nearly as celebrated, even though there is an ascension Sunday. Did you know that? You understand when it said about those 40 days, actually 39 days after Easter, you understand the ascension. You understand that Jesus was there for 40 days with the disciples. And I mean, after he rose from the dead and then he went back to be with, you know, in the heaven with the Father, sitting at the right hand. Maybe, maybe we should just have a special ascension service. Amen? Why not? Isn't that what we're supposed to be preparing for? I mean, I sat there with my father who, I don't know how much more time he's got. And he knows the Lord. But he's not ready to go today. He's ready, but he's not ready. You understand that, don't you? But understand, it's the joy that I have in my heart as his son that I know that my daddy, if he's not here for that ascension day, he will be ascended when to die. <laughs> when you're dead, your body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? And we need to understand that today. We need to understand that. You know, I was thinking about watching the space shuttle launch at night. If you've never seen that, it is a beautiful, beautiful sight. And you need to understand there's a brilliant trail of light. There's so much engineering and planning goes into that one moment. But someone, somewhere, hits that giant red launch button. The ascension of Jesus is that giant red launch button for the church. Acts 1.11, it says that the angel, right after the ascension, says, what are you doing standing around? Basically, get to work. An inactive Christian does not understand the significance of the ascension. An inward church will never be a great church on the move. Look at Rome, I mean, the book of Luke. Luke, on the screen, chapter 24, verses 50 through 53. And he led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. The disciples move after being rebuked 
by the angels is what they did. You understand? Sometimes when we get rebuked, we move. They worshiped. They had great joy. And eventually they took the gospel to the world. But before the rebuke, they responded totally inappropriate to Jesus. They were just standing around and staring. Church, no longer can we just stand around and stare. No longer can we just stand around with our hands folded up. And we need to realize that there is a great, great work to do. Believers, that means people who know God. Believers who know the Lord, the way they honor God is by being on the move. The next point, believers on the move often attend mm, church often, inv invite others to church. Now sometimes the hardest boundary to cross isn't a geo geopolitical line. You know what it is? It's a property line. Like love your neighbor. The one in your backyard, the one to, your, in, you know, to the side of you or whatever. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. Look at the screen. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Well, a few examples or, or principles are, are found right here in this text. If you care about people, you will be at church. Let me just say that again because I'm not hearing anything. If you care about people, you will be at church. Amen. 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 The best way to show concern, to promote love, and encourage one another is through the church. But the problem is some have habitually stayed away from church and it's not healthy. The Bible says that the day is drawing near. The day is drawing near. If we believe, church, that Christ is coming again, then it's even more critical that we work through and in the body of Christ. You see, church is like exercise. You do it twice a year, and it hurts. I'm serious. It's like the CEOs, Christmas and Easter-only Christians. Huh? But you've heard me say this, and I'll say it again. I'm talking to a lot of you. Because this has happened. You're here. But a lot of you who just skip out and skip out. But listen, when you're alive and God sends a crisis, guess what? You either call me or you call on the Lord. And the Lord can help you more than I can. I can just kind of help get you there. But you understand that the day is drawing near. Listen, you don't remember any one workout, but you do see the cumulative effects of working out over time. I mean, you've got to understand that. It's just like working out. Same with spiritual disciplines. Well, I don't feel like praying today. I don't feel like reading today. And I don't really feel like being in fellowship with believers today. Actually, I'm mad at the pastor right now because he just, he didn't call my name, but I know he's talking about me. I probably am. But guys, eat it. Eat it. This is what will save your life. This is what will get you. Some of you come in here today and your marriage is falling apart. This right here will get you through it. Some of you are in here, you need a physical healing. Right here. Some of you need spiritual disciplines. Right here. Some of you have you need wisdom. You need discernment. You need answers. Every promise God has ever made, he's kept them all. 
He's never broken one. Amen? He's never broken one. You need to understand the body of Christ. We need each other. We need God's word. Everyone should have at least one person that they are reaching. Let me ask you something. Does every, and I should see every hand. I'm not forcing you. Does everybody in here know one lost person? Raise your hand. One lost person. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. Does everyone in here know one unchurched person? Raise your hand. Okay, here's another one. Does everyone know at least one de church person? In other words, used to come to church, but don't come to church anymore. Amen. So do you think you can invite just one? Do you? One. Just one. Eighty percent of people are receptive of an invitation to church. That means, again, if we have 600 people in here, you do the math, that, and everybody went in and invited somebody, went out and invited somebody, 480 of those 600 invited would attend church. Amen? And I'm just telling you. And we need to understand that. That's why the gospel is all about multiplication. There was never but a plan A. The disciples had to share the gospel, and guess who's up next? It's us. We have to share the gospel. Here's the deal. You need to invite them to church. You need to bring them to a group setting. And if you invite them to church, you actually ought to take them out to eat lunch or take them to your house. A greater work begins with just one. So here's my question, and here's my challenge for next Sunday. Who is your one? Who is your one? We're not doing a campaign. We shouldn't have to do a campaign. But we come in here on Sunday, guys, and we forget all the people that are right there beyond the doors, right out here in this community. And we shouldn't have to be, have a campaign to invite people to church. I shouldn't have to have certain things that I got to tell you that the church needs money. You just need to be obedient and tithe to the Lord. Whether you agree with me, whether you agree with how we spend the money, you don't have an advocate with me. You have an advocate with the Father. Guys, this church, I was just going to tell you, it will never be the same since Revival Ohio. I will never be the same since Revival Ohio. You understand that it's just something different stirring in my soul. There's something different stirring in my soul. I Listen, I'm tired of just conferences and, and getting your ears tickled. And even though you, maybe I don't agree with everything that I see. And just like what happened here, it was incredible. But you understand, repentance and confession starts in the house of God. And that night when you came, you saw that. You saw some things that you're maybe going, oh my gosh, but you know what? God moved. You know that song, if you're honest, you understand a truth is harder than a lie. If we're honest. Listen to me. God wants to do a greater work here. My first sermon when I came, somebody tell me what was it about? Say it. Get in the shovel. Amen. And I said, guys, we got, it. we got some ditches to dig. And then y'all gave me a snow shovel, and I've been using it ever since. <laughs> but guys, I want to tell you something. We, we are a blessed people. We are. And, I, and I'm just going to go back and tell you, Revive Ohio. I stuck my neck on the chopping block. And you know what? If we lost someone over that, that then that's their problem. But I want to tell you what, there was transparency, there was honesty. The, the, listen, God's spirit fell this past week. And I'm still hearing stories. Some of you saw me go around and hug Lynn. I won't tell you what she said, Lynn Hunt, but she sent me a text message, one of the most powerful text messages that I've ever had in my entire life in ministry. She's been here for about 56 years, is that correct? 56 years, and what she told me, what, how God had just moved through her during... Revival Ohio. Listen to me. 
we can build new buildings and big buildings and have big bank accounts and great budgets here, but that's not what it's all about. It takes money. But we need to understand that there are people, as I'm in here talking, before I ever get through speaking, that are dying and going to hell that quick, that quick, that quick, that quick. And we always use, some of you in here, I know some things you have, I won't call out the diseases other than cancer, but if we had the cure to that, come on, we would give it. And even if God came in here today and healed you from stage four cancer or whatever he did, look, if he even raised you from the dead right here, if you don't know him, it does you no good. The gospel is what it's all about. So church, I'm not here to manipulate anything. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to offer you the free gift of salvation that Jesus offers everybody here. If you don't know him, today is the day of salvation. In a moment, we're going to stand, we're going to sing, and pastors will be right here. If you want to know the Jesus, you come down and you just tell us, and we'll lead you in that, how that works. Some of you, maybe you're looking for a church home. You say, that pastor's crazy. If you like a crazy pastor, maybe you'll come down and join. <laughs> but you know what? This is what I don't want. I don't want your fire going out. Some of you were really, really moved during Revive Ohio. You were. And I'm here today to say that God wants to do a lot bigger work. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know who all God's going to use. But I do know he'll use anybody who's willing to get their hands dirty. So today, if you're here and you just want to come and pray for others, to pray for this church that God will just be, do something awesome. Pray for Shelby County, man. For those of you who were involved in Revive and you went out, you know how much that means. Maybe you just want to come and pray for them today. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. Lord, I thank you that you have a greater work than we could ever imagine. Lord, I pray today that you would grip our hearts, not with fear, God, but with understanding that we have friends, we have family members, we have relatives, we have business associates who are dying and going to hell. But Lord, if we know you, we have the answer for them. So Lord, that's my prayer today. Lord, for those who don't know you, Lord, for those who may have been a little tentative about sharing their faith, that, God, they would continue doing that now, Lord, as they went out during Revival Ohio. Lord, for others here today, Lord, whatever their struggles may be, Lord, I pray that people would just come today and leave it all right here on the altar. God, I pray that we'll never, ever leave this place the same. So, Lord, you do your work today. We ask all this in your blessed name. Amen. Would you stand and you sing and come as the Lord instructs you to today? so glad that you joined us today. God wants to do so much for you and through you, and we want to hear about it. So take a moment to share your story with us at mystory@lbtlima.org. If you would also like to contribute financially to this ministry, you can do so at limabaptisttemple.org. Or you can download our church app available for iPhone and Android users. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy today's message.